As the confrontation gets heated, a customer lashes out, and an off-duty Quincy police officer, who investigators say was part of the group, flashes an ID. The dispute all apparently sparked over masks. Hey, listen, listen. All you had to say was, I have a medical exemption. And I, don't I don't have to tell you about my medical exemption. Yes, we ultimately see that store employee fall backward to the ground, and hear someone don't yell. Him. Don't push him, dude. Yeah. Luna's next video shows the employee throw Scott's own flip-flop at him and hit him square in the head. Argument sparked by a mask led to an officer-involved shooting. When one man confronted another for not wearing a mask, the maskless man allegedly pulled a knife and stabbed the other man. before. COVID-19 led America to mask mandates that caused unrest in the country. While there were those who felt that their freedoms were being violated, there were others who believed it was a necessary decision to help their country recover from the pandemic as quickly as possible. We wanted to see what that division looked like on a person-to-person -person level, and we wanted to know how they formed their different opinions about COVID and masks. Maybe not the very first moment, but I know that it was February, March last year. Um, I was probably in my apartment with my roommates and we didn't think it was a big deal at first, of course. I mean, we were mostly excited about not having school at that point, and we were kind of on a high of, oh, okay, like, we don't have to go into class anymore. Like, oh, that's so fun. Let's all go party, whatever. Uh, and then you start to hear more and more about it, and the cases are doubling, tripling every day. Yeah, originally, like, when we first heard about COVID, we hadn't really done any research about it. And I, like, my mom was wearing gloves while shopping in the stores. This, we were just hearing what the radio and the media was telling us. And then my family sat down, and my dad, who yeah, he teaches here in anatomy and physiology, is like, I started doing some research on this COVID. And he's like, look at these numbers. And he's like, this is not just, like, one source. Like, everybody is saying these numbers, and this is what the media is telling you. So originally, yes, we were more concerned about it, but then once you start looking at the big picture and all the numbers, you're like, oh, it's not anything like it was. It didn't really start affecting me until like middle of March when I started working at a restaurant and then we had to start wearing our masks. That's when it really started affecting me. But before then, like, they hadn't enforced, like, they didn't enforce anybody to wear a mask at that time, but I had to at work. That's when it really started, like, affecting my life. I can't necessarily remember, like, right when we started wearing masks. Uh, I mean, everything kind of happened pretty quickly for me at the beginning with my stepdad getting sick and experiencing that, so I definitely felt like I was in the midst of it, so wearing a mask didn't really feel abnormal because my mom was wearing a mask every time she went upstairs um, and we weren't really going into a lot of places. Um, and also Larry is in his upper 60s and he's slightly overweight so he had that against him. I'd say the worst symptom for him was his uh, back pain. He just had these like extreme muscle aches and just, I don't even know, body aches. He said it felt like Satan was wringing out his spine and like not letting go. And we could hear him because he was quarantined upstairs. We had him isolated. And we could hear him from downstairs like shouting out in pain just how bad his body was hurting. And it was awful to hear. Um, so what is your overall view on COVID? I think it's a joke. It's like the flu. I'll take my 0.01% chance of dying. I mean, quarantining the healthy has always been viewed as a poor medical practice. Right now, that's all they're doing. People are, they're starting to link more things like because you're not getting any exposure to anything, people are actually getting sicker. They're not building up anything in their immune system. I mean, if people want to wear masks, they're more than welcome to wear masks, but not everybody should be forced to wear a mask. I'll be honest, I go into Meyer. I don't wear a mask. I don't wear a mask anywhere except for at work because I have to. I and mean, even here at Grand Valley, my two in-person classes, the professors don't care, so I have it below my nose. And I go to work, if my boss is in the room, I put it up, but if not, I don't even usually have it on. 
I just think that they can't mandate what we do and don't wear for something that's not going to kill us. Like if it's the Black Plague, I understand. There's not enough information out there about COVID. The death rates are so low. More people die from heart disease and cardiac arrest and cancer every year compared to COVID. It's different when it's like right in your face and you're experiencing it. I've, if Larry hadn't gotten sick, I'm sure my opinion would be different. Um, I mean, you hear all the scary stories on the news and everything, but you can turn that off as well and just kind of like live on your own and notice like things don't seem that bad. Things don't seem like they're going wrong. People that are getting sick are recovering or a lot of people that are getting sick are barely getting sick. Some people don't even feel it. So like I get that, it can seem like it wasn't a big deal. And there, I definitely can understand like if it, if you didn't know somebody that got sick like bad, then it's easy to brush it off and push it aside. They can be political for sure. I don't think they have to be and I don't think they should be because ultimately what is wrong about a community coming together and making sure that the rest of the community is okay, I don't, see why that should be political, but in terms of an election year, and especially this election, it definitely became political. And like I said, I feel like people not wearing a mask became more of a statement rather than, I don't want to wear a mask because I don't want to. It's like, I'm not going to wear a mask because I don't want to. The whole mask issue um, right now, in my opinion, is being over-politicized, and that's not what we should be doing. We don't have time for politics right now. And it's like, I don't know. There's definitely things on Twitter as well, too. I see jokes, even people tweeting like, I hate when I forget my mask, and people think, I, or, and then people think I'm a Republican. So I don't personally see it as being political. I'm just like, oh, this is a mandate and I'm gonna follow it. And that's just how it is. Enough is enough. Like if I take my mask off in a store and I walk around without it on, I'm setting that example that it's okay. I wear a mask if somebody comes up to me like and they wanna have a conversation with me and they're like, will you please pull your mask over your nose? Like I do that. If I'm in a store and they told me I need to wear a mask, I put it on under my nose and they say, you need to have it over your nose. Like I do put it on to respect the people. But if you're not gonna confront me about it, I'm not wearing a mask. And if I know it's only one worker, like at Meyer, only the greeters will tell you something about the mask. She's gotta get past the greeter, and then they don't say anything. None of the clerks do, none of the stalkers do, nobody does. Like, I understand that, but at the same time, if you're going in public, like, you could possibly be exposing people that you don't know who do have families to protect, and I think it's kind of selfish and a little bit petty because it's really not a big deal to put something over your ears for 30 minutes while you're in the store. Um, I feel like at that point you're just not wearing a mask to wear to make a statement, which you can make that statement. I don't have to agree with you, um, but I don't see why it's so hard to wear a mask for like short little trips into the store. I don't think, theoretically, yes. If everybody truly wore an N95 mask every time they went out, but you're never gonna get that. It's like they tried to do the two-week shutdown in the beginning, it was supposed to go away after the two-week shutdown. Not everybody's gonna stay in lockdown. I didn't stay in lockdown. Why do you stay in lockdown? Because it's COVID, it's not like I get, I'm gonna die. I understand I have a chance of dying. Yes, I, my immunity could go up and I could walk out the store and I could get COVID and I could die from it but it's not like I have a huge chance of dying as a 20 year old who is healthy. As hard as COVID was and all of the negativity that came out of it, I would say that there are a lot of positives that came out of it as well because I have learned to be a lot more grateful for what we had before and just like hugging another person when you see them for the first time in a while or hugging goodbye, um, I really took that for granted Yes, masks are better than no masks. But you shouldn't have to wear one. No, they shouldn't force me to wear a mask. Um, I didn't mind the masks. 
at first. I mean, whatever. If I can stop any person from feeling the way that Larry did, um, I would do what I can, and putting something over my face wasn't a big deal. I'm starting to get sick of it, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal in terms of what it can do to stop this going on, because I would love COVID-19 to be done with.